So this is part two of the pocket wizard system for Nikon. The first part we did the TTL and we finished the video by showing that the TTL with the pocket wizard works really well and um, now what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to show you a setup that I did to get um, it was basically the same setup uh, that I did when I did this shot the only difference is that when I did this shot I had two strokes and one speed light and in this particular case the, for the video what I did is I used two speed lights and, and, and one strobe now uh, you're probably wondering why I showing strobes if most people don't have strobes and this is really for speed lights well the reason why I want to show the three of them is because basically a lot of the people who have strobes also have speed lights and you might as well take advantage of both by using the system so the first thing that I'm but the emphasis is going to be on the speed light so if you don't have strobes uh, this is going to be just as useful so uh, I already showed you what you need to do in terms of setting up your Flex TT5 and your Mini. Now, what you want to do with your strobe, okay, is basically you can either connect the Flex uh, TT5, and again, every strobe system is different. Uh, I want to clarify that I have a brown color lights, and a Pocket Wizard hasn't made a special transmitter where you can control everything from the ACS3 like they have done uh, I believe for the Einsteins, the Alien Bees and I don't remember which other light but, um, but anyway uh, I have brown color and and for brown color uh, basically um, you know I um, I manage my, my lights all from the battery power pack so what I did is I use my strobe as my main light and then uh, my hair light okay and this is by the way this is why it's important to get good quality stuff because uh, can you imagine this is hanging from the air and it's on the 16th floor and the only reason why I put it like that is because I have a very strong bracket here otherwise I wouldn't do it I can tell you that one of the things I do not like about the Flex TT5 is that they are very, very delicate. And, and one of the reasons why sometimes I use the on the bottom, I, I screw it on, is because the hot shoe is made of plastic and, and it's very delicate and I've already broken one. And the other thing that happens with this uh, is that if you, if you drop it and it falls on the floor, it can break very easy. I also... Uh, I was very lucky the cap came off and you know you know it didn't break but anyway uh, the other thing is you're probably saying why am I putting this this is a Gary Fong snood to be honest with you this is something that I bought a long time ago and I'm using it here because it's useful for hair light I'm not recommended it in any way you can there's many cheaper types of snoods that you can use and it doesn't have to even be uh, the gallery phone but anyway I'm just showing you the setup so I did this over here and then uh, my third speed light I put it right here on the floor you know and this is going to be my fill light so and I put a, a you know an orange gel just to make it more interesting because it was the sunset so I wanted to uh, balance the light so the first thing that I do is uh, I put everything well s my main light is set at zero okay because that's my stroke so my AC3 is not going to do anything for that my group B which is the one for the uh, that I'm using for the fill light okay so that one is going to be in group B okay and then for group C uh, I have uh, my hair light so the first thing that I did is I with my strobe I measured uh, the light at 2 50th of a second uh, because if you've seen my other videos you know you can see well this is a 100 of a second but at 2 50th of a second you know I I shot the background first and once I got uh, the exposure that I wanted for the background then I move on to the lights and then balance it that way when I 
shoot with my light meter uh, when I trigger my slow with the light meter basically I got 250 of a second f11 this is my aperture and then ISO 100 for people that have light meters they're probably thinking why are you showing me this well it doesn't matter this is the correct exposure that I would get from my strobe um, you know with the power that I had it and I, by the way I had it in the minimum power then for the okay so then I measured my uh, my hair light and what I like to do with hair light is I like to have it about a stop over okay so when I uh, measure it because I wanted to get uh, 11, uh, 16 what I had to do is I had to go over two stops actually the the AC3 when I tried one stop it was still not powerful enough because one of the things that you will find out very quickly with your speed lights is that the far you know that they, they're powerful I mean but they are not as powerful as strobes and the farther you put it the more uh, power you need the beauty of this is I can just turn the wheel from here and done I don't even have to touch the flash so two stops over to get the hair light uh, to f16 uh, then uh, for my field light what I did in group B well it says A but it was in manual I started at zero and at zero uh, I believe that I got a four that wasn't enough so then 11 so you know I started playing with it and to get to five six I think I ended up putting one stop over so when I did all that okay and uh, and I took the shot this is what I got <laughs> this is me oh my god my shirt is all dirty anyway the so you know this is basically how to shoot uh, with your pocket wizards in manual and actually I have four minutes left so I'm actually gonna do the hypersync right here now what is hypersync uh, you've heard in another video that I did high-speed sync and high speed sync is very well known. High speed sync with the pocket wizards, when you're using TTL, it works just like your Nikon. Uh, uh, you don't have any problems with your speed lights. You can put it over 2 50th of a second and it will work just fine. And what do you need to do uh, high speed sync or hyper sync for? Well, you do it when you want to go to wider apertures because when you go to a very wide aperture, sometimes you have to go to a very high shutter speed, which is more than 250 of a second, especially if you're shooting like at 1 8. So, in this particular case, I wanted to, when I, um, you know, when I uh, expose for the background, and um, uh, when I expose for the background, you can see that in order to get the background that I wanted I had to go to four seconds a second at f1.8 so the first thing that you do is uh, for the my brown color light what you have to do is you have to hook it up to the flex TT5 it will not work with your pocket wizard 2 it will only work with your pocket wizard flex TT5 that's why I'm even considering buying another Flex TT5 to use with my um, with my brown color light because I also have the the plus two which is usually what I hook up to my to my lights but it won't let me do um, you know hypersync and I shoot a lot against the sun uh, as you will see in the final picture that I did and when I shoot against the sun. Uh, you know even if I use neutral density filters if I'm shooting at 1.8 or 2.8 I often have to go higher than 250 of a second so once you do that and um, you know you basically um, oh here I'm showing that I had it in the minute so the minimum power for my lights is 6.0 and I had it at 6.1 and at 6.1 look how wonderful this is this is 4000 and for people that have strobes you, you will really appreciate this because you can do 1 4000 of a second 1.8 okay and get you know your your subject perfectly sharp and your background completely blurred out and use your strobes as if it was in high speed sync they call it hypersync and I think this is one of the best inventions that uh, Pocket Wizard has had with this Flex 
TT5 and mini system because this really takes strobe lighting to a whole new level. Now, I only know of all the people that I know in the South Florida area, there is only two photographers that are doing this, uh, and a friend of mine and, and myself. And it's basically because a lot of studios uh, don't have the flex system and don't believe that this will work. And I just hope that they try it because here you see this is a demonstration. It works. And, and again, huge advantage because, uh, you know, a lot of people are getting around it by using neutral density filters. But when you use neutral density filters, then you have to put your uh, uh, power at a lot higher um, you know, you, you have to consume a lot more power. You can see in this particular one, uh, so here I did one four thousand of a second, but because I wanted the background a little bit lighter, I went to two, one two thousand five hundred of a second, one point eight. And my, let me see if I have here a picture of my setup. My light wasn't, oh, I don't have one here. Well, my light was maybe, I don't know, uh, 10 feet away. So that's not super close. Uh, now, when I took, uh, and, and I've always said that this is one of the shots that I'm most proud of, not necessarily, well, the model obviously came out beautiful and the picture I liked it a lot, but the reason it was the first time that I was trying the, um, the hypersync uh, function, and actually I was kind of scared of using it, so I did use my three-stop neutral density filter but because I was shooting against the sun and you can no notice that I underexposed the background so that's why it's dark uh, I was able to shoot at 1000 of a second at f4 so this uh, demonstrate that the hypersync really works uh, so I hope that you uh, um, now feel a lot more comfortable with using this system and if you haven't made up your mind on buying it uh, I think is is worthwhile. Now, if if anybody from Pocket Wizard is watching this video, I will tell you a couple of things since I have a couple of minutes left that I think uh, you guys need to do to improve this because it's also one of the reasons why some people that I know are not buying it. One of the things, and it's a simple thing, at least from my standpoint, maybe it's difficult to do it is this thing about having only two configurations is very very impractical. Even the old Pocket Wizard Plus 2 allows you to go to four different channels. So having only two is really, really inconvenient. Okay, so this is one of the things. And if you have one in basic, okay, and the other one you have it on TTL, as I used to have, then you basically have one channel. You only even have more than one channel. And the other thing is, you have to connect it to a computer. I know that you can do the learn function you know and press your other pocket wizards but it, sometimes it works sometimes it does and it's a pain in the neck so you have to in my opinion come up with a new uh, flex tt5 that allows you to change to more than two channels uh, easily from the outside the other thing is i really think they're very very fragile i mean i've broken two of them uh, the hot shoe on one because it's plastic and it's soft and if you are using one of those brackets where you squeeze it in and, and it's those metal things, then then it's, it's, it's really, really delicate. And, and, um, and the other thing is, you know, I've dropped my Pocket Wizard Plus to the floor several times and nothing happens. I dropped this one only once and I hope not to drop it again. And I mean, the whole thing just almost exploded. I mean, I had to, uh, you know, assemble it. And, and really, uh, you know, I was kind of scared. So uh, those are two things that I think you guys really, really need to do. And I'm saying it in front of everybody so they know that those are the only two drawbacks. But on the other hand, the benefits more than outset, offset these two little things. Uh, and, and I think you guys have come up with a wonderful system. And, uh, and that's why I'm so loyal and I'm recommending not only to Speedlight users to buy it, but also for people that have uh, strobes. So thank you very much, and I hope this will help you now to shoot and take full advantage of your Pocket Wizard Mini and Flex DT5 system.